Welcome to the FWAT Show on the Coil Entertainment Network. I'm Rob Steele. That's Jesus Jones in the background. And it's time again for your irregularly scheduled program that is most reassuring in its claim that this is the show that lets you know that if it feels as though the world has lost its mind, it's not just you, it has. As evidenced by the ongoing saga of some UCLA basketball players who shoplifted in China, which makes me wonder what the hell you were doing in China anyway. And when you go over there, you get all these, you know, briefs and lectures about things not to do there. Otherwise, it could go horribly wrong. And, you know, shoplifting is bad anyway. But they did in China and they were put in prison. And Donald Trump claims he got them out, except there's no evidence of actual contact between China and and Donald Trump. Right. So anyway, he's very upset with LeVar Ball, who is the father of LaAngelo Ball, the basketball player for UCLA. He's angry with him because LeVar Ball didn't thank him for helping get his son out of a Chinese prison, which no one's really sure if he actually did or not. Now, LeVar Ball shares a first name with someone who is also fairly popular still, and he's catching some flack for this. LeVar Burton Jordy LaForge of Star Trek The Next Generation, or maybe the guy from Reading Rainbow, or even the guy from Roots. You know what? Same dude. He's catching shit for this. Because people think that it's his son, and it isn't, who went to the Chinese prison. And wow. Although I, I am amused that Brent Spiner, the guy who played Data on Star Trek The Next Generation, popped up and said that if LeVar Burton really cared about the president, he'd change his name. It was a joke. Don't get mad at Data. Maybe it was Lore that said that. That's a Star Trek joke. I'm moving on. Now, LaAngelo is leaving UCLA basketball pretty much over this issue. Their season's almost over anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But just as a parting shot, LaAngelo did send Donald Trump three pairs of very expensive basketball shoes. Three pair, one red, one white, one blue. And according to LeVar Ball, they didn't get a thank you. Hmm. Okay, if someone could explain to me what the f*** is going on with this case. There was a woman in Pennsylvania named Bonnie Kate who had to undergo a background check for her job. Like you do, it happens. Now, she refused to be fingerprinted because she thought it would brand her with, quote, the mark of the devil. So because she refused to have the background check, She was fired because that's the way it's supposed to work. She decided to take her employer, Altoona Student Transportation, to court and sued them, saying they fired her over religious differences. That's right. It's against my religion to be fingerprinted. Now, here's the part where I'm really confused. She won the case. You know what? No. No, I'm afraid this... We can't let this happen. Because then you can have anybody be, oh, no, you can't fingerprint me. It's against my religion. I don't care if you arrested me with 5,000 kilos of cocaine and 40,000 sex slaves. No, no, no. Fingerprinting is against my religion. You know what? F*** you and your religion. Put the ink on your finger. It washes off. Grow up. Of course, that's not the only really asinine thing to come out of our court system recently. It turns out that the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, sometimes called NICS, has goofed of late. (gasps) Who knew? This is the system that's supposed to keep people with criminal records from buying guns. Guess what? It failed. Actually, I'm sure it's failed quite a bit, but it failed on this one particular instance where a disgruntled former Air Force employee bought a gun, went to a church in Texas, and shot, what was it, 26 people? Yeah. You might have heard of that. Been in the news lately? Now, they claim that it's just one failure of this system. It's just failed one person. No, it failed 27. The shooter and the 26 victims, which means this system is not enough. We need more. Doesn't that make sense? Of course, there's a lot of things that don't make sense In neighboring states, let's see. Okay, technically, Alabama and Texas aren't neighboring. They live one door down from each other. Doesn't matter. 
Alabama has still got a guy who's trying to run for Senate who is a child molester. I think he's even an admitted child molester at this point. Roy Moore. And a guy named Joel Pollock, a senior editor at Beer Bart News, said it was okay for Roy Moore to have sex with underaged girls. Cite your source? Oh, he can do that. That would be a 1973 Ringo Starr song called You're 16, You're Beautiful, and You're Mine. And if Ringo Starr says it's okay to bang 16-year-olds, then, then why can't Roy Moore do it? No. No. That, that's not how this works. That's not how any of this works. It really isn't. But that's not the only thing we have coming out of him this week. If being a pedophile isn't enough to get him not elected, how about the quote about Jews are all going to hell because they don't believe in God? Yeah, that was a quote from him because someone he ran against a while ago was Jewish. And he said there's no way that this guy was going to get into heaven because he was Jewish and they don't believe in God. Well, if Jews don't believe in God, what exactly do you think they believe in? By the way, Jesus, he was Jewish. Speaking of things that were said that really should never have been said, that's right, Donnie Trump recently addressed a group of Native Americans and referred to Senator Elizabeth Warren even by calling her Pocahontas. Now, in that kind of a context, he doesn't realize that that's kind of a derogatory way of using it. And of course, all the Native Americans present looked at him and said, the f*** are you doing? Really? Is that how you want to show respect to the Navajo Indians, the code breakers back from World War I? You remember them? Couldn't have won the war without them. And Donnie goes and f***s it off. Brilliant. What else is he f***ing off this week? That would be the environment. Because now the Environmental Protection Agency no longer has a rule requiring mining companies to have money to clean up any pollution they create. That's right. They can dump whatever they want, wherever they want, scot-free, no penalties. So what we need to do is gather enough people to create just this massive armada to get this jack-off out of office. We'll take any, anyone we can find to get this guy out of office. Now, somebody popped up this week and said, you know what, we want Donald Trump out of office. And this is a fairly substantial group. They've been in the news a lot. I just wasn't expecting Westboro Baptist Church to say that Donald Trump needs to be out of office. Yeah, Westboro, the people who are protesting soldier funerals, who say that gay people are evil, and, you know, they're not. But they think that Donald Trump needs to be taken out of office because his sex life puts the entire nation at peril. You know what? In this instance, as much as I would love to see Westboro actually catch fire and, you know, struck by lightning and be gone, you know what? At this point, maybe he'll listen to them. Because they're just as f***ed up as he is. If it seems like I'm doing a lot of religion stories, it's not my fault. A lot of them have just popped up. As an example, here's another one coming out of Adelaide, Australia. Which I've heard is a nice place to go, but I've never been there. Anyway, outside a Catholic school that is trying to remain unnamed, Blackfriars Priory School, they unveiled a statue of a priest in a monk's robe, handing a boy a small loaf of bread. That sounds fairly innocuous, right? The problem is people think that that's not what's happening in this because of where they placed the bread and the level at which he's handing it to the boy. They think it looks like he's pulling a penis out of his, uh, you know, some imaginary hole in the robe and letting the boy do something with... Yeah, that's not what's happening here. It's a loaf of bread. It is fairly clearly a loaf of bread. It's actually a French loaf because it's got those slices things on the top going. Yeah, you've seen those. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's Google. Look up loaf of bread, French loaf. It comes up. That's what this looks like. Now, could it be a penis? Mm, no, I actually have a penis. Mine does not have air vents cut in the top of it. That's a loaf of bread. Now, it could have been done a little bit better. You could have put it somewhere else so it doesn't look like that's what it could be. But for those of you protesting who obviously don't know what penises look like, you got the general shape, but they don't have air vents. Just saying. Speaking of bread, CNN ran a story recently about how Pizza Hut is testing a beer and wine delivery system. Because who doesn't want an adult beverage with their pie? Okay. 
That may not be such a bad idea, although CNN confused me because when I clicked on the article to find out more about it, the video that is attached to this story about Pizza Hut is a video showing Domino's self-driving cars. You confused? I'm confused. I think CNN is confused. Anyway, further on down in the story, it doesn't explain that Pizza Hut drivers, who must be over 21 to deliver the adult beverages, must view the ID of the person buying the pizza and the beer at the door before they can actually deliver it. And it may not actually be terribly cost effective because right now a six pack of Budweiser is $10.99 or $6.98 at your local Walmart. I'll let you figure out which is more cost effective and what goes better with beer and pizza than sports. So I'll throw out the sports story of the week, which probably needs to be thrown out anyway. Russia has been barred from competing in the forthcoming Winter Olympics in South Korea because they do a lot of doping. What? Russians doping in the Olympics? No, can't be. Surely not. Except, yeah. Well, it turns out that certain Russian Olympiads are still going to be allowed to participate, except they cannot fly the Russian flag. They have to go under a purely neutral Olympic flag to compete. Which makes me wonder, what's the point? Since the Winter Olympics are coming up, that means it's that time of year again for you to go into any retail store in the United States and be bombarded with Christmas carols. Now, I'm going to make a plea with you. Don't give any crap to anyone who works in a retail store this time of year. Because when I go shopping, I go in, I know what I'm going to get because I've got a list. I went to the store this morning. The, on the list was nacho chips and bananas because that's all that we need right now. I went in. I got the bananas. I got the chips. I checked out. I left. But before I left, I was really annoyed with all the music in the stores. I really was. It was just, oi, Christmas carols again. Stop. And if you have to work there, think of how mad that would drive you. So be nice to the retailers. Buy online. No, no, I'm kidding. Well, actually, I'm not. I did go online to buy my daughter a Christmas present. And since she doesn't listen to the show, I'll go ahead and tell you that it's a uh, one of those plasma balls, you know, where you plug it in somewhere and it makes the nice little electric thing inside the glass. It's really cool. You've seen them before. But I did see something in the description of this item on Amazon that threw me off just a little bit. I'm going to quote this. It says, quote, please pay attention don't keep it near to smell it for too long time because it may make your throat feel not so well. Description by Yoda. Who smells a plasma ball? Play with it? Sure. I mean, yeah, you don't throw them at each other, but you ooh, make the lightning move around. I don't smell them. Do you know anyone who smells a plasma ball? If you do, contact the show through email, even rob at thefwatshow.com or go to the website, thefwatshow.com and click on the buttons for Facebook and Twitter. Message me there. And you know what? While you're there, go ahead and subscribe to the show on iTunes or through the Google Play Store or Blueberry or YouTube even. There's links for all that on the slightly new and improved website. Go visit that. Or you can check out the Coil Entertainment Network website, coil.us, C-O-Y-L dot U-S, because somehow that confused people. I don't know why. Either of those sites, you can get to the FWAT shop where you can get a T-shirt or a hat or a coffee mug that'll all go to support the network. Nice, high-quality stuff. Go ahead and buy one. You need Christmas presents anyway. Go ahead and get one of these. It's something lovely you can give any member of your family, except maybe your overly Republican father-in-law. Maybe not him. Anyway, I'm going to leave you with another religion story. Go figure. This one has to do with a nativity scene that's been making its way around Twitter because a woman found the nativity scene at a house that has caused a bit of controversy in her neighborhood because it has a homosexual couple. Oh, lordy me, it's got a gay couple living down the street. How could that happen? You know what? Grow up. Anyway, the nativity scene, even I'm amused by this, it has a baby Jesus and it has a Joseph on one side and on the other side it has another Joseph. <coughs> I'm amused. So is the internet. And you know what? If you're not amused by it, something you need to remember is Jesus had two dads. And if you don't get it, stop and think. Just not in traffic, because that'll upset people. Be safe, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs>